Let me just quickly start off by saying that I often really enjoy listening to Dr. Jordan Peterson, especially when he intellectually undresses audacious journalists who think that reciting ideological slogans is enough to corner someone like Peterson into submission. But with all there is to admire with Dr. Peterson, when push comes to shove, he often proves that whatever his beliefs are, they ultimately aren't a like a big improvement on the postmoderns that he routinely denounces. But before I explain why, let me ask you uh, a question. What would you think of a person who came to you with the, the claim that he is Jesus Christ, the son of God and the savior of the world reincarnate? And from what you can tell, he was, he's, he's sincere. Uh, he really believes what he's saying. If you're a sane person yourself, you'd probably think he's insane because only a sane person can accurately assess the infirmity of an insane person because insanity is characterized by a significant loss of one's grasp of reality. Like we all misunderstand the truths of reality to some degree, but there's a line that you cross when you venture off into territory so foreign to the fabric of reality that you become a danger to yourself and often to others as well. Because ultimately reality requires our submission. If I come to the conclusion that I can fly, for example, and that gravity isn't of such a nature that it is, then I'm going to act out in ways that are dangerous to myself because reality will become a danger to me at that point. So for the person who says that they are Jesus Christ reincarnate, what would you say to them? What would be the remedy to their insanity? Perhaps you could, you could uh, talk some sense into them, make them see the truth of things and reinitiate them back into the world of the sane. What proof could you give to the insane person to, to help them? What's something you could say that they could not deny? You might say, everyone else in the world denies that you're the son of God. The whole world denies your claim, which is why you've been assessed and diagnosed with some sort of mental infirmity. But he could reply to that by saying, the world's denied Christ's divinity when he last appeared too. And then they sentence him to death for his apparent blasphemies. Or what about the person who claims that reality as we experience it is just an illusion or a simulation? What could you say to help him see reason? What appeal could you make to the reality of reality? Because every appeal you might make would be to evidence that he ultimately denies is just another construct within the illusion that we call reality. Every time you corner him with some reasonable demonstration, he could he just escape it by accusing you of being enslaved to a superstition because you're too weak or too afraid to admit that reality is nothing more than some idea in your head. And here's the thing, that all bears an uncanny resemblance to my own experience of interacting with self-styled skeptics because as soon as you propose something they don't like, they will invoke this kind of skepticism. They'll say, prove it to me, prove it in a way that I can't deconstruct in some way. As long as any figment of a doubt is within their reach, they will plant it in the ground and claim your view unproven and therefore irrational or without evidence. In the same manner as the man who claims he's the son of God or that reality is an illusion. This is the MO of the insane person because nobody actually lives this way. Nobody is a skeptic all the way through. And the people who think it's a badge of honor uh, to be skeptical, are actually only skeptical when it's convenient. To be a consistent skeptic all the way through is to be someone that will deny all claims of truth or fact unless they can be undeniably demonstrated to them as first-hand experience. But even that shouldn't be good enough for the skeptic whose first priority is to treat all assertions with suspicion. Because to be a skeptic committed to skepticism begs a certain question. What undeniable proof do you have that skepticism is true or valid? What proof do you have that the most rational position is the one that denies any claim of truth until it becomes a first-hand experience? That claim itself hasn't been proven as an empirical first-hand experience. At a certain point, the skeptic has to become skeptical of his own skepticism or risk being incoherent or a hypocrite. What's more, what proof does the skeptic have that his perception of those first-hand experiences aren't misperceptions of his own mind or that his own mind is even operating properly. As, as Chesterton says, it is an act of faith to assert that our thoughts have any relation to reality at all. What undeniable proof do you have that the way your senses and your intellect grasp reality are actually accurate even when such experiences are first-hand experiences. To be a skeptic, again, consistently and all the way through, is to be someone who ultimately denies everything or is susceptible to denying everything and therefore knows nothing. Because 99% of what we know has been relayed to us by someone else. I've never been to Australia, but 
I believe it exists. I've never, I've never witnessed a gun kill someone, but I sure as heck believe that they do. I haven't witnessed any of the things historians assure us took place in the past, but I trust that many of them did. To be a skeptic is to believe that the instinct to deny a claim is the most rational, but it's actually much more akin to the most irrational, and I would argue the most insane. And here's where it gets really frustrating, because among those who claim to be skeptics, they are the last people to admit that they don't know anything. They're almost always the first to jump into the fray of some debate and assert truths of their own that they think others should accept. Dr. Jordan Peterson is this kind of person. He's famous because of his insistence that certain claims are true and others are false. It's a rare sight for Peterson to admit that he doesn't know what he's talking about. But whenever Peterson faces a question he doesn't like, he suddenly invokes this kind of skepticism, as if that had been his philosophical framework all along. This gets especially egregious when someone asks him whether God exists or not. In reply, he says, what do you mean by do? And what do you mean by you? And what do you mean by believe? And what do you mean by God? And if someone were to reply that we know what those things mean, he'll deny that. And already in his line of questioning, there's a massive contradiction. Listen to this sentence. What do you mean by do? He's both using the word do, taking for granted that we all know what it means, and then denying that we know what it means with a, a skeptical embellishment. The best reply to Peterson's apparent deconstruction here is to throw it right back at him. What do you mean by what? What do you mean by mean? What do you mean by by? Because if his skepticism is valid, the kind that he just invoked, then so is that reply. And so is the inevitable continuation of that game in which nobody can ever say anything without calling every detail in the statement into question until we're left with no rational discourse and no knowledge as a result. The only valid thing for a person to do who insists that they can't know anything is to not say anything. And yet they don't do that proving that their skepticism is actually just a ploy to avoid having to admit uncomfortable truths. Chief among them is God exists. At the end of the day, people who invoke that kind of skepticism sound eerily similar to certifiably insane people. The only difference is that the insane people are earnest in their insanity. The others are just toying with the mindset of the lunatic for its convenience. Can I ask you to stick around for one extra minute? Because if you enjoyed that, well, first of all, thanks, thanks for watching. But now I could really benefit from your help, um, which you can do in a couple of ways. You can check out my sponsor, Real Estate for Life, who is a network of pro-family real estate agents that can connect you with one in your area. So if you're looking to buy a home, check them out at realestateforlife.org. And if you can help out directly financially, I tend to trust that most of my regular viewers can afford to drop a $5 tip in my jar once a year. And if they did, I wouldn't have to worry about the financial viability of this effort. So if you do want to support, you can go to brianholdsworth.ca slash support or join me in my locals community to get uh, exclusive content and chances to interact with me and members of uh, the like-minded community at brianholdsworth.locals.com.